I tested the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor for 15 nights against a scientific EEG device and have quite a few things to say about this new Garmin Sleep Monitor. And as you will see, it's nuanced. I do think it's a relatively niche product in the end, but there's definitely a target audience that should get it. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now let's first briefly discuss what this thing actually is. It's basically the top of the line Garmin sensor at a relatively cheap price point made to be worn comfortably on the biceps during the night. However, from the outset, I feel it's only mostly a good option for people that are already in the Garmin ecosystem and already own a Garmin watch, but don't feel comfortable wearing it at night. In my experience, using the Garmin app as purely a sleep tracker without also tracking your activities doesn't feel like a good fit and not really what Garmin devices are designed for. So that already limits its use to some degree. And I'm also curious to hear how many people actually want to deal with a second Garmin device that they have to charge actually more frequently than I thought. For me, in the end, it turned out I had to charge the sleep monitor every five to seven days days or so, which is even worse battery life than some of the Garmin watches I own that also use the same sensor but I wear it during the day as well and track my sports with it. But of course you can just charge this thing during the day so if you plug it in every day there's no issues but okay if you're already in the garmin ecosystem so you already have a garmin watch but you don't like wearing it at night and you don't mind charging a second device it is actually quite a nice solution because wearing it on your biceps is a lot more comfortable also for me but of course then the tracking and the sleep stage tracking of this device at night should be good. So let's take a look at how it performed in my testing. But first, running this channel next to my full-time job as a scientist is neither easy or cheap. I pay my editor Alex for instance, and I've also bought most devices I've tested myself. If you want to support the easiest and most direct way of doing that is by clicking my general Amazon affiliate link before making any Amazon purchase. You can even bookmark it if you like. So click it one time and then I think on Google Chrome, for instance, you press Command or Control D. And if you then use it before any future Amazon purchase, it doesn't cost you any extra and it does help support the channel. You can also become a YouTube member, which is like Patreon on YouTube, which is linked up here and it gives you early access to some of my videos. And finally, there are also a bunch of extra affiliate links in the description below, most of which give you the best discount possible, for instance, on the Whoop Strap or the 8 Sleep Pod. So if you're interested in those, that would really help as well. But let's get to the sleep testing results of the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor. So we use the ZMAX EEG headband as a reference, which is on top right here. This is also not perfect, especially when it comes to detecting awake moments, so we won't be focusing on this column right here but we will be focusing on deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep. So on the left are the same sleep stages, but now as detected by the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor. And if the Garmin would agree perfectly with the reference, all these values right here in yellow should be 100%. Now, first of all, we see that deep sleep agreement is really good at about 90%. So about 90% of what the reference said was deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the Index Sleep Monitor. So that's actually quite good. Light sleep agreement is okay at 64%. Have a REM sleep agreement is where the Garmin index sleep monitor seems to struggle. So less than 50% of what was REM sleep according to the reference was also detected as REM sleep by the Garmin index sleep monitor. So that's something I'm not too happy with. And that's something we've seen more often for Garmin devices. They're just not good at detecting REM sleep, at least not on me. But let's take a look at some of the individual nights to see what's actually going on here. So here we have the first night I wanted to share with you with on top the sleep stages as detected by the reference EEG device and on the bottom the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor. Now overall this looks pretty decent and especially when we look at deep sleep as marked in purple right here, we see this matches very well between the reference device and the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor the Garmin does detect a little bit too much deep sleep, but otherwise it's really good. For this second night, we see more or less the same thing. 
Basically, all deep sleep detected by the reference is also detected by Garmin, and we see the same thing for this last example. However, REM sleep agreement is not quite as good. And this night right here is actually a good example of that. So in this case, we see I likely had one, two, three, four, or probably five more or less complete sleep cycles, each of them ending in REM sleep. However, the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor wasn't really able to detect this. So some of the REM sleep matches quite well, like right here. However, here in the beginning, a lot of extra REM sleep is detected. Also here in the middle, a lot of extra is detected. So this really doesn't look very good for REM sleep, whereas deep sleep is quite okay. Now for some nights, this does look a little bit better like this one right here. You can see I likely had one, two, three, four sleep cycles right here. And out of all REM segments, the Garmin was able to detect three of them. However, it likely missed some REM sleep here near the end and detected some extra REM sleep here in the beginning. So definitely not great in terms of REM sleep. But we can actually put this performance into the context of many other devices I've tested in the past. And that's displayed in this overview right here, where the better the agreement with the reference, the more to the top right the device is. And all the devices that were tested against the ZMAX EG headband, so the one we used in this video, are marked in green. So along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the three sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, the worst out of those three. And we have the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor right here. So it's actually very close in performance to, for instance, the Garmin Venue 3, Venue 4, Garmin Phoenix 8, the Garmin 4165, the Garmin 4970. So many of the more recently tested Garmin devices are right here in the middle. So they're not amongst the absolute worst devices, but because their REM sleep tracking isn't very good yet, they're still in the middle right here, close to some Amazfit devices, for instance, which actually have similar sleep tracking characteristics where the REM sleep isn't that great. So you have to decide for yourself if this is good enough for you. Now, just for completeness, let's mention some of the best devices. There are actually six brands that are really good at sleep stage tracking. On iOS, the Apple Watch is really good, a really solid sleep stage tracker, especially when you have sort of normal night sleep. There's also the Pixel Watch. So Google has really good sleep stage tracking and the same is true for Fitbit because all Fitbit devices and Pixel Watches use the same sleep stage tracking or at least relatively recent ones. There's also the Whoop Strap, which on my recent testing seems to have improved as well with the new sleep stage tracking algorithm. I really like the Whoop Strap, but it is a subscription service. It's a good overall device with a great app, but you do have to pay that monthly fee. The same goes for the Aura Ring, also good sleep stage tracking with a monthly fee. Same is also true for the Sleep 2 app or Nukua app. And finally, we have the H Sleep Pod, which is my favorite overall sleep improvement device. Now, I mention this a lot, but in brief, it's basically a device that goes around your mattress. So it tracks you without you wearing anything on your body. It can measure your heart rate, heart rate variability, sleep stages, and very reliably at that. So they're all the way on the top right here. And it also has a cooling and heating functionality for each side of the bed independently. So both the blanket can be cooled and also the surface of the bed, and now even the pillows, though I don't know if this is worth the money. Especially that cooling blanket and surface of the mattress have been amazing for me. I'm a relatively hot sleeper, so I need a relatively cooling down of my body during the night. Especially in summer, the eight sleep has just been a godsend. And it's independent for each side of the bed. So any partner I've had always needed to sleep warmer than me, so they can set their temperature. And I also like in winter that I can now have the bed heat up before I get into bed. Now, if you want to test it out, you can do that using my affiliate link up here and you will get the best discount possible. And you will need that discount because it's not a cheap device. So only get it if you can actually afford it. I really love it. I genuinely have used it for many, many years now. But as I said, only get it if you can afford it and my affiliate link will give you the best discount possible. But back to the testing, how good is the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor? While it's okay for deep sleep, for instance, it seems, REM sleep not amazing. So the overall sleep stage tracking still leaves something to be desired with Garmin. So just keep this testing in mind. Of course, this is on my body, so we don't always know how results translate. However, I recently did a review of all scientific literature and that more or less matches what we see here. And you can find that linked up here. So the sleep stage tracking performance of the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor, at least on me, is basically the same as many other Garmin devices I've tested. And I'm pretty sure they use the same sleep sleep stage tracking algorithm across all their current devices. This is because sleep stage tracking algorithms are very expensive to develop. And I think Garmin has been using the same one for quite a while. 
Of course, this testing was just done on my body, which makes it somewhat limited and also in line with scientific literature. So testing done by many different scientists. You can find that in this video linked up here. I do think at some point Garmin might have improved their sleep stage tracking somewhere over the last two years or so, because it sometimes even performed worse in my testing and it hasn't happened in a while. If anyone knows more about firmware updates and sort of algorithm updates, let us know in the comments below because I couldn't at least find it for now, but there might be some release notes that I missed. But these are just the sleep stages, of course. The index sleep monitor also measures other things like heart rate variability and pulse ox. And that brings me back to my earlier statement. If you're already within the Garmin ecosystem and you want to track your sleep without wearing anything on your wrist, this is actually a really good choice. You get the latest hardware of Garmin for quite a decent price. I think the current price is probably around $170 or so. You will retain all features like body battery and I actually find it quite comfortable to wear on my biceps here. It is quite big, I would have liked it to be a bit slimmer, but otherwise it's really nice to wear. However, as a standalone product without also tracking all my exercises with a Garmin watch, it just doesn't make sense to me. In that case, I would recommend you just get yourself a good Garmin watch, many of which do most if not all of the same things as the Index Lee monitor also does. You can even get for instance a 22mm biceps band and just wear your watch on your biceps if you want. Again, as a product, the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor isn't bad at all, but it feels more like an accessory and not a standalone product. By the way, I cannot be sure I haven't heard anything, but I think there's a good chance Garmin at some point creates a strap sometime soon, similar to the Whoop strap or the Amazfit Helio strap. Though it would involve some redesign of their app, I do think they might realize this is a way they could make a lot of money because these kind of devices are really popular. If that's the case, that could make the index sleep monitor even more redundant since the Garmin strap would basically do all of that and more and be a much more complete product. Unfortunately, the chance that Garmin would give me the opportunity to test one before or even shortly after release are low to none given that they've never provided me with a product before release and believe me, I've been sending dozens of emails and I've just given up for now. If you want to help me give them a tiny nudge, the best way of doing that is by increasing my subscriber number. So at some point, hopefully they can no longer ignore me, though I'm not too sure it will ever happen. Also, if you do decide to get the Garmin Index Sleep Monitor, a Whoop Strap, an 8 Sleep Pod, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, or maybe you want to get yourself a new hat, you want to get the best discount possible and at the same time support the channel. If you use one of my affiliate links down in the description below, that would really help me and also support your wallet. Now, given that you watched this video, I think you will like this video on the Garmin Foreigner 970, my favorite running watch at the moment and the one I use myself, and also this video on the Sleep Pod.